The Xperia 5 Mark V is here, and in this video I'm taking it out on a field test, trying out the low light performance and the very, very impressive new bokeh mode, and how it performs at videography and much more. So grab some snacks and let's take a closer look at what this compact phone is actually capable of. Let's go. Well, hello and welcome to this video. I'm spending the night in this cabin and I have the Xperia 5 Mark V with me. So I'm staying at Ur Natur and they have a bunch of different cabins in these woods here. And it's supposed to rain tonight, so hopefully I'll be able to catch some very moody photos of these cabins. So when I first heard about the specs of this phone, my mind immediately went to, ah, oh, this is a smaller version of the Xperia 1 Mark V. Awesome. And after trying it for a little bit, I can definitely still say that. I think Sony has really managed to put a lot of power into this more compact and affordable device. Well, let's go on a little walk in this forest here and we'll see what we can find. Just need to grab my raincoat because it's probably gonna be soaking wet in a minute or two. Did you hear that? Nice. Okay, look at this. That is the most beautiful cabin I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's like Lord of the Rings. Wow. Like this is on the roof. <laughs> that is so cool. So I'm going inside this cabin for a little while because it's pouring down rain and I'm gonna try to see if I can get some shots from inside the cabin because it looks insanely cozy in here. So I'm thinking going out at dusk and uh, hopefully get the cabins like lit up and try out the, the low light performance of the phone. Woo. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Finally, we're out again and the sun is peeking through the forest. So <laughs> it's changing very quickly. Like half an hour ago, it was like thunder and rain and now we have sunshine. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to catch some of it before it's gone. Oh, look at the light now. It's hurry a bit. I need to take a shot of like in the direction of the light. I'm gonna go for manual controls on this one. Oh, look at that. So if we change to cloudy, we get a much warmer tone in the photo, which I like on photos like this. That looks very good, but we need to try another one in the other direction. So when you're shooting in basic mode, you still have some options to choose from uh, in terms of like creative things. <laughs> you can choose the, the white balance. So if you want a warmer or a colder photo, a photo like this, I would like to have it very warm. And you can still lower the exposure of like how dark or how bright you want the photo to be. So I think this looks good. And now we just maybe brighten up a little bit. We take the photo and boom, it looks great. I like it. So I think the basic mode is a very good way to, to start like playing around with settings on your photo. And like I 
personally enjoy to, to shoot everything myself. But when I started out, I shot everything in auto. So I think going into basic mode and playing around with these sliders here, I think that's a great start to, to become better at like learning how the camera works and how, how you want the photo to come out. <laughs> so when I, when I got this phone presented to me, by Sony, they said that, oh, we have a new bokeh mode. I'm gonna pronounce this as bokeh mode, it may not be right. So when they presented to me, they said, oh, we have this new update to the bokeh mode, which is very good. And I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to try that out. And I'm actually very, very impressed. This looks very good. So the first thing I noticed was how good the edges were. Like, that's usually the problem. You, on phones, when you take like on your hand, Usually, like, between the fingers, there will be this kind of ugh, digital kind of messed up thing. This is so impressive. And now I took a photo of Sami, who's holding the camera. Like, we have bokeh balls and we have, like, the edges are so sharp. And it looks, to me, very, very impressive. <laughs> I'm actually blown away. This is so good. I think it's very cool that... You even have like this curvature that you get with like a regular lens. <laughs> this is actually very cool. And I love that we have the bokeh balls. I think that's the key thing, which we all love. And how they do it, I have no idea, but it's very cool. But like usually these types of things haven't really been my thing because they've always looked very digital and like you only apply like a Gaussian blur to the background in Photoshop and I haven't really been a fan of it but this it actually starts looking very close to a like mirrorless camera so what is really nice is that we will get the update to the Xperia 1 Mark 5 so it will also get the, the really great bokeh mode look at the light so this like fence here is called a Yashgård in Swedish and I love the look of those. And look at this rock, the big rock over there with all the moss on. It's it, I can't even talk. It gets better and better for every second. Like, come and look at this. Like, what is this? <laughs> this is... <laughs> yeah, I'm speechless. This is like a... Finalized photo, perfect. I don't even know what to say. This is very, very beautiful. So I want to quickly mention how angles really matter. So if you look at the window of the cabin, it's dark now. And if you just like go down in this angle, it's now lit up by the reflection of the sky from that way. And look how beautiful that looks. Like, look at the difference. No reflection, reflection. So it's finally getting dark and we're gonna try out the low light performance out of the Xperia 5 Mark V. So as I said earlier, behind the 24 millimeter lens, we have the same sensor that we have on the Xperia 1 Mark V. So with that, we get much better low light performance compared to before. And we're gonna put it up to the test and I cannot find any better spot to try that out than on this cabin here. And we're gonna use a light to light up the cabin from the inside to get a really nice 
ambience in the shot. <laughs> Gonna go with this one. That looks so cool. And it's so sharp. So remember that from the last video about the Xperia 1 Mark V that the night shooting function is to me very impressive and honestly one of my favorite features. I don't know the ISO on this shot because the camera decides for me but I remember on, on the in the other video that I took a shot and it was like 2000 ISO and that is very impressive to get nice results on a smartphone. So uh, I really like this feature and I, I think this comes in handy for many people. You don't even need to use a tripod which is pretty insane. that it's been raining a lot. So since the Xperia 5 Mark V has 30 FPS shooting, just as the 1 Mark V, I figured why not try it out on the waves that are coming in and splashing into the rocks here. I think it could be a pretty cool shot. So I had to get up here <laughs> to be able to talk because it's very windy down there. So why I think this is a more compact version of the flagship One Mark V is partly because we still have the 4K 120fps feature. And to me, this is one of my favorite things about the recent Xperia phones. So usually there's a huge image quality drop when filming in slow motion on, on other phones. But being able to shoot crispy 4K footage in five times slow motion is very impressive. And I think it's very nice to see that we get these features on a more compact and more affordable phone than the flagship. So we're gonna try the slow motion 4K shot down here again with the waves coming in and like splashing around the phone. Something that is also very nice about the Xperia 5 Mark V is that we now have s Cinetone for mobile as well. This means that you can get cinematic colors directly out of the phone, so you don't have to color grade and do advanced stuff afterwards. I really like the blue tones that it gives in, in this scenario. In my videos, I always say in situations like these that ah, I should work out more. Uh, and yet here I am, tired, exhausted of just walking just <laughs> a little, the shortest hike on the planet. Maybe I should definitely start working out more. <laughs> this is a bokträd <laughs> in Swedish. They are so beautiful. And Omberg where I'm at right now, is famous for its bokskog, like the forest of these trees. Here we can see what species lives in these forests. That's the tawny owl. When you live close to stuff like this, as you probably already know, that you get used to, to stuff near your home doesn't appear as spectacular as it does to tourists, for example. And, and I try my best to really think twice, go to a place that I've been to before because you can always find new stuff. These locations always look different from 
like season to season. This is a perfect spot for portraits. So I'm gonna try the bokeh mode on Sami here. And I found some great ways to really get the best out of this effect. When you go into basic here, you press here, and then you have the, the bokeh, how much bokeh you want. And like, I think personally, the way it looks the best is if you go to 2x. And this is equivalent to 48 millimeters, which is a typical focal length for portraits. So that's why I think it looks the best on, on 48 millimeters. And then if you press on this little button here, you can change to warm up the photo and make it colder. If you warm it up just a bit and also drag down the exposure a bit, I think the results are very good. Let's snap away. And what I really like is that you actually have like the like the circular swirl that you get with like an 85 or a 50 millimeter lens with a wide aperture. So I think that's really cool to see. So as you can see, we have two different lenses. So we have the 16 mm ultra wide, as well as the 24 mm wide. But if we go into Photography Pro, we can see that we have 16 mm, we have 24, and we have 48. So in total, we have three different lenses to choose from. So the 48 mm focal length, using the same sensor as the 24 mm. After trying it out for a little bit, I think the quality is really good of the, out of the 48. So a little fun fact is that the 24 millimeter on this phone is actually 48 megapixels, or the sensor is. What we're mentioning is that when you're using the 24 millimeter, you don't get a 48 megapixel photo, you get a 12 megapixel photo, but with very high quality pixels. Something I always find fun is to try out what different focal lengths looks like when standing on the same spot. And if you do this for a while, when you're out, you will quickly pick up how certain focal lengths looks like in different scenarios and I think that is a very important and a very good skill to practice. So next time you're standing at a spot with a beautiful location trying to challenge yourself to take one shot with each focal length that you have and see what you can come up with and I think you'll be surprised of how many good shots you can come up with when just tr switching lenses or focal lengths. So which phone is for you. The Xperia 1 Mark V has the ability to shoot 85 to 125 millimeter zoom and you can shoot that in 4K 120 FPS. On this on the other hand you can shoot 16 and 24 millimeter in 4K 120 and the 48 millimeter you're able to shoot at regular 4K which still looks very good but you cannot slow it down to 5x. But the 16 and 24 look equally as good on both of these phones and the footage looks fantastic. So another difference is that the Xperia 1 Mark V has a 4K resolution screen and the Xperia 5 Mark V has a full HD screen or 1080 plus I think it's called which still looks very good since the screen isn't that big. So there's an obvious size difference of these ones and that is only personal preference what you prefer to carry around and use. And in terms of battery life, the Xperia 5 Mark V has a 5000 milliamp battery, the same as the Xperia 1 Mark V, but since it's smaller and have a smaller screen and full HD screen instead of 4K, you get a really, really good battery life out of this phone. I've been shooting this whole day on the phone and I haven't charged it and it adds 66%. Really, really good battery life. And it hasn't heated up on me a single time when I would been shooting with it so I'm very impressed by the performance out of this one. So this isn't a comparison video I just think this is an obvious question to ask when they've released two great phones and I should at least talk about it. So if you would like to see a comparison video between these two let me know in the comments. So all of the Xperia packages are now completely free from plastic so for example this main box is crafted using Sony's own blended materials and the sleeve and the sticker that you peel off when you buy the phone are both made out of recyclable paper, which I find is a very good thing because we're now taking photos of nature, so why not take care of it? So isn't this a good place to end this video? With some views and a sunset that didn't really perform the way I wanted to, but beautiful anyways with some views. I wanna say a huge thanks to you for watching. 
And if you want to know more about the Xperia 5 Mark V, I have a link down in the description. I also have a link to a folder where you can check out the full resolution photos. So until next time, have a good one. Bye.